Hey guys, I'm going to do another one of those gaming vlogs uh, again because I have something actually important to tell you guys this time. Uh, but first, I want to talk about uh, my Let's Play of The Witcher 3. I'm going to continue my Let's Play, I'm pretty sure, but I did get a copyright scare. So there are only like three reasons why I would ever stop uh, doing a Let's Play if uh, I haven't finished the game. One of them is you guys aren't interested in watching it. This means that the viewership for each video, video dips below like a thousand. Then if I really love the game, I'll just continue playing it off uh, video and off camera and uh, start another Let's Play which you guys might actually be more interested in. Um, another reason might be because I'm not interested in the game, which I'm definitely interested in Witcher 3 so that shouldn't be a problem. But the third reason, one of the most important reasons, is that it gets a bunch of copyright flags. Uh, this happened a lot with Brutal Legend. A lot of uh, people were just claiming copyright, and like it was like every video couldn't be monetized, but it's not as much about the monetiza monetization as it is about the fact that if something gets a lot of copyright flags or a certain type of copyright flag, I can't even upload the video. Like It just becomes all of a sudden non-playable and just deleted pretty much on YouTube. And if there is a high chance of that happening, I don't really feel like I should be making a whole uh, playthrough of something. So today I got a bunch of emails telling me that two of my Witcher 3 Let's Play videos were non not available anymore because of copyright claims. And then I clicked on the copyright claim to view more, and it wasn't there. And they were monetized, and they still existed, and it was like, what the fuck just happened? So hopefully that won't become an actual deal. But today, what I really want to talk about, because a lot of you guys have been asking me, and I feel like it's not fair to my viewers to not discuss this, is that I have quit working for ZoomIn.TV slash ZoomIn Games, so I'm no longer going to be their host, there's going to be no more Terra Show. Uh, and I'm really sad about this because it was a big part of my life for like two or three years, but I'm also kind of relieved because it's become uh, a partnership that isn't really beneficial to me anymore. So uh, I've been a host for their channel for numerous shows for I think two or three years, and I've also been, uh, I've had my gaming channel partnered with them. And I want to give you guys kind of a history of my experience with them so that you guys can better understand why I quit. Uh, I feel like I owe it to you guys, and I always want to open up and tell you guys everything. So, yeah, but uh, first I want a little disclaimer. I don't think you guys should stop watching ZoomIn.TV. I think ZoomIn Games is fucking amazing. I think Tim, Tatmu, Christina, and Robert, they're all, um, or I mean Katarina, not Christina, I barely know her, but uh, I know the other two guys, uh, Rob and uh, Tim pretty well, like Tim does all of the editing and Robert's like the main guy who I talk to a lot, and I consider them friends, and I love that channel and I love those people, and so I harbor no ill will, it just doesn't seem like a good fit for me anymore. So, um, two or three years ago when I started with them, they contacted me and they really liked my gaming videos and my stream. I was just starting out on YouTube, but I was a pretty prevalent uh, StarCraft streamer, and I told them that I would be the host in the face of their channel if they allowed me to add a segment about StarCraft, and I worked my fucking ass off on this, like, strategy videos. These strategy videos, it's like a strategy show um, about how to do certain game, uh, how to do certain, like, builds, how to, like, little, like, tips for StarCraft. And I did, like, a fuck ton of editing for this. I did 100% of the editing. Um, it was really high production quality. It was great. Uh, the tips were approved by high-level players and pros, and I was making sure that I was doing the right shit, and I put my fucking heart and soul into this, but it didn't get very many viewers. And that was expected, because what I wanted to do was give more visibility to, for, for esports and StarCraft to the mainstream gaming community. And that's what I was really excited about with working with Zoom and Games, was having that kind of media outlet to talk to people who love games, but people who aren't necessarily privy to all of the esports and the StarCraft stuff. And I was so into StarCraft, I wanted to be a StarCraft caster, I wanted to be a personality, I wanted to be a really good StarCraft player, so I was doing this. and. It got downvoted to hell and just made me... One of the reasons why I kind of quit StarCraft is because the community was so toxic that I was making this great content and people were just hating on me because I had tits and they thought I wasn't legit, which is ridiculous because I spent all this time on the show. But that is a topic for another day. So I was doing this show at the end of my Terra Talks videos, which was like my Terra show, um, and they decided to cut it at the end of the season. And by that time, I was disenchanted with StarCraft and the community, and I was like, fine, whatever. But that's the whole reason that I got into working with Zoomin. So they gave me another show uh, where I I did Terra Talks as news, and then I had another show uh, about like game releases, right? And then um, later, I, I can't remember, I had, okay, so I had the shopping guide, and I had the news show, which was uh, Terra Talks. 
And then at the end of that season, they cut my shopping guide. No, I, it's really hard to remember because it was a long time ago, but they kept just cutting my shows. And it got to the point where I only had one show, which was the Terra show, and they revamped it and it was cool, but the topic started getting stagnant and it wasn't, they weren't talking about things that I actually cared about anymore. It was just like the HoloLens and other things that were supposed to like be attention whoring, like grabbing, you know, topics, right? And um, this whole time I was like recording this with my good camera and I had to have my green screen up and I had to do it on at a certain time and then I had to edit the videos. I had to cut up the videos and then send them off to add the graphics on, like Tim or Tatmu would add the graphics. And um, I was like spending hours doing this for like little to no money because all I got was a percentage of the revenue and the revenue for each video wasn't very good. Um, as revenue often is for just like one video once a week. So instead of having three shows, I was cut down to one show that I wasn't really feeling passionate about, that I didn't really have any opinions on. Like I didn't really, I don't care about the new fucking Skylanders like minis or like the HoloLens and just stuff that like didn't grab my attention and I wasn't making the money I deserve. And they were not interested in giving me um, an amount of money per episode. And this whole time that I've been with them, I've never felt like they've really given my channel and my content any kind of visibility. Like, they have over 100,000 subscribers, or 800,000 subscribers, and I never really felt like they were supporting me in that way. Like, I had to often remind them to put my link even in the description. Uh, I never really got any airtime to talk about my own content or my own ideas, and um, it just doesn't feel like a good fit. And as Jay just walked over me. And uh, as you guys know, I can't do anything unless I'm really passionate about it. And I'm passionate about my two channels. I'm really passionate about gaming, but not like the stupid attention-grabbing topics that are just like, oh, the next big thing! And it's just kind of like, ugh. I don't really care about that stuff. And so it started to become mundane doing the videos, and my heart wasn't in it, and I don't feel like I was getting paid what I deserve. And then every other, okay, they started getting like 10,000 hosts for the show and started doing like 10,000 different shows and then promising me that I was gonna get different types of shows and then they talked about once that I was gonna be able to interview game developers, which I was so fucking excited about. Like, yes, Skype interviews with game, developer, game developers or like game um, public figures. I thought that would be so fucking amazing and that never came to fruition. And all of the new shows that they were gonna give me never happened. And then they were like, okay, we'll up the percentage of money that you get from the revenue. And it, it became to the point where I was making less than a hundred bucks a month off of spending so many hours doing things for the show that I didn't feel like I was getting the respect I deserve as a content producer or as the face of the channel, which is what I was hired to be. So every other single person that works on Zoom and Games lives in fucking Netherlands, and I don't. So I felt out of the loop. That's why they took the new show away from me. They said that they wanted it to be, you know, like quicker. So as soon as the news breaks, they have a show up on their time uh, during the Netherlands time. And I was like, that, that makes sense. And everything that they did made sense, but it kind of felt like a personal blow to me. And it was a, it was a blow to my my status as a host on the show. So not only did I not feel like I was hugely a part of the team, um, I don't feel like I was being compensated for my time or what I was worth, and I also didn't feel like I was doing things that were passionate to me, and it was just like, ugh. And I had a green screen that was taking up, it was covering one of my posters and taking up like half of my living room, and they wanted me to do more and more and more on my end. Like, they wanted me to do full body even though my green screen wasn't big enough. They wanted me to try out a bunch of different mics, um, and they would get like shitty mics and send them to me, and they were awful, and it was just like, ugh, kind of stressful. And then, at the same time, I'm partnered, okay, so, being partnered, uh, having a partnered channel on YouTube, makes no fucking sense to me. Pretty much all I did was sign off 40% of my revenue to them with no... I don't know if it's 40%, I don't know what the percentage is, I was just giving you a, an idea, but um, I wasn't getting anything from it. Like, literally zero. They're, you're supposed to be on a network so that you can get benefits, but I don't see what the benefits are. And if you guys know what the benefits are supposed to be, please tell me, because I thought it was supposed to be some kind of marketing where, like, the really big channels or the really big networks give channels more exposure, or they network with each other within the network. And I've even talked to like Toby, and Toby's at, with one of the like the best networks, and he doesn't even know what benefit he's getting, other than just being able to say that my channel is now partnered with the network. It's like really a bad deal. 
Uh, and that's how I feel with Zoom and games. Like, I've just been giving them parts of my money that they're not involved in, and it's like kind of confusing to me because my vlog channel's not partnered, and it's doing fine, and I'm just getting all of the revenue to myself. You know, it's like there's no downfall really that I can see. Maybe there is some on the back end that I don't know about, like, you know, people bothering me less about copyright claims. But I just have no idea what benefit I'm getting, and that frustrates me a little bit because I feel like I'm being used um, in that way. Also, there was something else. Um, so I talked to Robert about it, and Robert was really supportive. He was like, oh my god, you're definitely a part of the team, and, you know, we don't want you to go anywhere, and we'll try to give you new, new shows and stuff like that, but they didn't offer to up my compensation or pay me what I'm worth, and they just, they, it's so, such empty promises about getting me new shows that I'm really interested in, that it's just kind of like, I don't want to wait around for a show that I'm really passionate about, or topics that I'm really passionate about, and like, power through all the ones that I'm not, and I never felt like it was a medium to get my channel out there, or to get my opinions out there, and it was just kind of like, I didn't feel appreciated um, in that way, and it's not like it's their fault, really, because, you know, it's hard to find topics for a show every week or whatever, and it's hard to collaborate when they're so far away um, and we're on different time zones. It just didn't feel like a good fit anymore for me, and I want to focus on my own content, I want to grow my own channels, and Zoom and Games wasn't even helping me with that, and it's not their fault that they're not helping me, I'm not sure how they could help me, um, other than just, you know, allowing me to have my links on the in the description or whatever, but... I don't know. I, I would do it all again if I could, and I'm very grateful for whatever they have given me and the um, opportunity to be a host and have that kind of um, professionalism and experience under my belt. I'm really happy about that and glad about that, and I'm glad that I was a part of the team. And hopefully we'll find some way to work together again down the line. Uh, but right now they're at E3, and I haven't gotten another response from Robert. But uh, I took my green screen down and replaced it with my magic table, and now I can see my like, I have more room in my apartment again. I can finally calibrate my professional camera to uh, work over in the other part of my house where I'm going to be doing all of my videos. And I really just want to focus, focus on the, the things and the games that I'm passionate about and not, you know, have to work for someone else, especially when I feel like I'm not being appreciated in a couple ways. But, yeah, so there you have it. Uh, that's kind of what happened and that's uh, what was going down. They, do, they dwindled the show, the reason that, they dwindled all my shows, and then the reason that I was there in the first place didn't exist anymore. I was trying to promote esports and promote all the things that I love in gaming, and it just, you know, things come to an end, and it should be sad, but, you know, we'll get over it. And hopefully you guys continue to watch Zoom and Games. They're great, their top fives are really hilarious, and um, the voiceover chick has a hot voice, so yeah. Also, expect more Bloodborne videos and um, more Witcher 3 videos uh, pending the fact that I'm not getting in trouble for some kind of copyright bullshit. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it.